All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay Will. So I wanted to go ahead and give you my full review of the Leico Le S3. Now, let's do a little bit of, a bit of the tech specs first, and then we'll jump right into this review. This won't be very long, and I'm going to try to get straight to it. So you're looking at a 5.5-inch display uh, coming in at 1080p, a 16-megapixel rear camera, and an 8 on the front, a Snapdragon 652, three gigs of RAM on board, uh, 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now this phone is dual SIM and it is unlocked and it has dual SIM standby, uses a nano SIM. It's an IPS display and um, it's a pretty good display. We'll get into that in a second. It runs EUI, which is uh, Lieco's um, operating system on skin on top of Android 6.0.1. It's an optical processor, of course, Adreno 510, uh, 32 gigs on board. If I didn't mention, I think I did with three gigs of RAM. And um, does shoot in 4K. It has Dolby um, Atmos sound with noise cancellation microphone as well. Uh, and it, with a dedicated cancellation mic, I should say. And it has Quick Charge 3.0, USB Type-C. So that's the techie part. It comes in three colors, but right now only the gold and this gray is available. The rose gold says to be coming soon. So I'm going to get into the actual review here. And I'm going to cover the things that I normally would cover when I'm doing a review. So I've had this phone for a while now and it's definitely time for a review. I've already reviewed the bigger brother, if you will, which is the the Pro 3, the Echo the Pro 3. And there are some differences here. Um, now at the beginning, when I first got this phone, I felt like I could recommend it. You know, it'll be good. I'll recommend it. However, uh, after having it, I'm gonna tell you how I really feel about it. So first let's get to the hardware. Here's where the phone really shines. You've got uh, your IR blaster up top, which is really nice. You got a microphone and a speaker down here with USB type C, dual SIM slot over here, 16 megapixel on the back with your fingerprint reader and dual tone flash. On this side, power button and volume rocker, and that's pretty much it. And on the front, I'm sorry, proximity sensor and eight megapixel camera. And you got the speaker hole there. This doesn't have dual speakers like the bigger one, the bigger brother, the Pro. Uh, this just has one speaker on the bottom, but it is plenty loud. So build quality for this, it's a 10. Um, I don't have any complaints about it. I actually think this feels better than the LaPro 3 because it has some more grip. It's not, it doesn't feel as slippery as the LaPro 3. Uh, the Pro 3 definitely is not as rigid and it's a little bit more rounded. But every part of this phone, since the rear and the back, has a chamfered edge there. So it's a little different. But hardware for me, this phone gets a 10 for sure. Now, screen quality. The screen quality is really good. Is it a 10? Nah, not so much. Um, I give it more along the lines of about an 8 or so. It's not the best 1080p display I've seen, but it still works. And it's not a by far any a bad display at all. It's just that it's not a 10. I've got other phones that are 1080p that look a heck of a lot better in, in sunlight and just you know day-to-day -day use and the way I look at the phone. Um the speakers on here, like I said before, it doesn't have dual speakers like the um pro version. The pro version has a speaker coming out of here and out of the bottom right here. So but this speaker is really, really loud. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's not. Uh, it, it does very well and um, it, it can it can handle its own when compared to other phones. Now, it's not the loudest bottom firing speaker and it definitely doesn't compare to dual speakers, but it can get the job done. You won't be disappointed with the speaker. And that's about as best I can tell you if you don't have the phone. Um, now, as far as features go, this kind of is a feature rich phone. Not so much. It has certain features like you get the live button where you can watch live TV. Uh, and that's probably it. Then you get a feed to the left over here like that. You get a feed of all the music and stuff and videos and just whatever. Um, and that's kind of where it stops. It's definitely, and they have their own overlay here. And um, a lot of, a lot of places have overlays, but the recent button right here is the huge downfall for this phone. Like this is where everything is at this little hub when you press the recent button. And this it's kind of a real letdown. It's not, I shouldn't say let down. It's just very difficult to get used to at times. It's a learning curve. I find myself swiping down to get to my settings and they're on the bottom. So it's kind of weird. Um, but I got used to it just like I did with the Pro. It's just that the average consumer um, 
uh, might have a little bit of trouble getting used to it and techies definitely will have trouble getting used to it. Um, the cameras on here uh, have been, they've performed very well. I had, I don't have any problems with, with cameras. Uh, these are the same cameras that are on the pro version. So you're going to get a fantastic uh, video quality, I think. It does shoot in 4K uh, and it shoots in 1080p, but no 60 frames per second. So the cameras are, you know, they're a go. You know, they're about um they're about as good as any other cell phone that I've I've used in this in in this this put together like this. Um and again the software isn't my favorite, so I've been running Pixel Launcher before this review. I wanted to go ahead and put the launch locker launcher back on there. Um and it does does pretty good. It's it's okay. I just always mistake that for a app tray, and then the apps are scattered everywhere. You see, so, so, um, as far as battery life goes, battery life with this, I'm, I mean, I'm able to pull down consistently about over six hours of screen on time. I even got seven hours of screen on time at one point or another. Uh, this is just a great battery. It'll last you all day. Um, uh, because it's running the 600 series, it's, it is battery is power efficient, but to my surprise, the 652 in my experience is not better than the 625. And, and, you know, the, the Moto Z Play is just one of the best battery phones out and best performing phones out. It runs a 625. This one's a 652. And this isn't that impressive, actually. I experienced some lag with this software and this and this um, performance here. Uh, I just, it got annoying when I would try to press buttons and stuff. And they would just, it would take a long time. Uh, and this has three gigs of RAM. So I credited the bad experience as far as lag and stuff like that and stuttering to the processor and then this skin, this overlay. On the Pro 3, you don't see any of that because it has a Snapdragon 821 and four gigs of RAM, but the same software though. And that's what I don't understand. But, you know, it's just one of those things that um, that's just kind of how it is. Fingerprint reader is plenty fast. It's good. It's not bad at all. Put it on; it'll turn on. It's 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 not the fastest, but why do you need a fast, 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 fast fingerprint reader? As long as it comes on and you have the option to have a fingerprint reader, that's a huge plus. And I'm not going to complain about the fingerprint reader being super slow because it's really not that bad. Now, price point is where this phone wins. Um, this phone really wins when it comes to the price. I mean, it it does very well. It is I got it for 129 bucks, and then they gave me the free case and the tempered glasses on here was free as well. So I don't have any complaints about that. Price point is a win. And even if you can't get it for the 129, you had to pay the 249 or 150, whatever. They had several different prices on it, 250, 150. Then had a little bonus, you can get it for 129 during Black Friday. It just wins. The price is a go for this phone because of what it offers. You've got a Snapdragon 652. Uh, you've got three gigs of RAM. You've got a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. More importantly, the best part about this phone is the price and the build quality. This is some serious build quality. All metal body. 16 megapixel camera and 8 megapixel camera. I mean, it is good. It's USB Type-C. You also have technology called CDLA, which is enhanced software for your music. I mean, you're, you will definitely enjoy some serious sound from this phone. I mean, it rivals the Axon 7, but you have to have the headphones. It rivals the OnePlus 3. It's actually better. Let me just be real about it. The CDLA technology in this phone and with the headphones is better than the Axon 7. It's better than the OnePlus 3. It's better than all the phones that I have that have some kind of upgraded DAC. This phone's better. Now I said it. In my experience, this phone is worlds ahead when you plug in the headphones with the CDLA technology, boss move. They killed it with that. Uh, the only thing that, that help, holds me back on this phone is the, the software. And then the 652, again, just did not perform like I thought it would. I was, it was actually kind of surprised. I was like, whoa, you know, um, this is a shock. So, you know, there it is. Would I recommend this phone? Oh, yeah. I would just tell a person, throw a launcher on it, and you got a win. You got a full metal body, uh, shoot some 4K, fingerprint reader. You got all the bells and whistles that you want in a so-called flagship phone right here in a package that cost not even a third of that. So, it's your man, J. Will. Full review for the Leico uh, S3. I was going to say the Pro 3. 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend this over the Pro 3 for performance purposes. Uh, I would recommend it, but not to somebody who wants a heavy performer. Um, it's not as fast. It's not as fluid. And the 6, uh, 652 doesn't perform, in my experience, as well as the 625. That is super weird to me. I thought it would be a lot faster and more fluid, but I credit that only to their software. So it's your man, Jay Will. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, and it was a blast uh, having you watch this video. I love when you guys come on and watch the videos. Thank you so much. And I love when you guys comment. So comment if you have this phone. Tell me what you think. Would you recommend it? I'd recommend it, but not over the Pro 3. Uh, but I would recommend this phone to everyone. I just wouldn't recommend it to a person who says, which one would you take, the Pro 3 or this? Now that I've actually had the phone and I've been using it, I wouldn't recommend this over the Pro 3. Not at all. The performance on the Pro 3 is just way too good. Uh, and and I don't, that's just what it is in my experience. So there you have it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to comment and share the video. And, uh, you know, tell me your thoughts on it if you have it or if you have the Pro or if you have both. That would be even better. Take care.